Welcome to Germany, gentlemen. It looks funny, isn't it? Like a film or something. He's German, like hmm. that guy we're fighting, Hitler or whatever. He's German as well or something. Your first time in this country? I went to Boulogne on a school trip in the fifth year. Got all flick knives and shit and porn mags and whatever. <laughs> Mrs. Daniels searched my bag and I was excluded for ten days. No way, ten days? That's actually like abuse. You know what I mean. Mrs. Daniels was a right munter. <laughs> Boulogne is in France, not Germany. Whatever. I was away when we did geography. My nan died. <laughs> Cigarette, gentlemen? No, duh. They're, like, disgusting and really bad for you. Can you actually put that out? Because I'm, like, breathing in your smoke and stuff and that's against my human rights. It's like a sort of murder. <laughs> when you were shot down, you were on a reconnaissance mission over the suburbs of Munich. What were you looking for? You know, places to bomb and stuff, like... <laughs> Factories or some shit like that. I shouldn't actually have been in the plane. I only came along because I'm going out with his sister. <laughs> she's well up for it. Boy, that's my sister, man. I know, but she's well up for it, though. <laughs> no, she is well up for it. She's slack. Mm. A bombing mission is planned for the Munich suburbs. Tell me more. No way. You're not my dad. <laughs> I can and will use force, if necessary, to extract information from you. You actually can't, because that's against the Geneva Convention and shit. You can get, like, taken to court and fined or something. I want legal aid in a telephone call. That's actually my rights. Do not talk to me about your rights! You have no rights in this room! Uh... Actually, they do. <laughs> it's like the law and shit. <laughs> We did it as a module at Berlin Unit. Um, I didn't believe the lecture at first. And this is me to the geezer. Are you sure, mate? And he's all like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Silence! <laughs> well, he needs to take a chill pill. You know what I mean? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Standard. <laughs> Fabulous half, lads. Absolutely fabulous. Now we've got the goal up. So this half, play opportunity by all means, but keep it tight. Keep it defensive. Now listen, Ronnie, you've got to go back and fill if it looks like it's going that way, right? Otherwise, top notch. You've got to keep your heads in the game. Now please, don't listen to the crowd. Brevin's coming off any minute because he's on a card. That means Gilles or Rosto. So Andy, you've got to mark like hell. Lads, well done. You're tonight's team, no question. You're playing fabulous. Get out there, have some fun and win the game. Oh, Go on! Go on! Go on! Kill them. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. All right. Fine. Busy. Fairly quiet. See you got the horse again. Yep. Didn't fancy him out of the bike. They were all gone. Oh, I'm saying they keep giving me this souped-up beamer. Got about 200 horsepower under the bonnet. You? <laughs> One. Oh, yeah. yeah Does she want a polo? No. Nice having a partner, though. She's not my partner. What's her name? <laughs> no idea. Never given it any thought. Haven't a bloody clue. Right. Well, are you sure she doesn't want a polo? Maybe an extra strong mint. Look, why don't you just... <laughs> Roger that, we'll take that one. Oh, hang on. Unless you want to. <laughs> well, uh, we're doing a bit of surveillance, you know. Keeping an eye on a few things. Very hush hush. Well, you're doing a very good job of blending in. <laughs> so, uh, that blue sob, is that, is, that a, is that a yay or a nay? <laughs> It's a May. Laters. <laughs> OK, people, give the ball in the air. We're all originally from Africa. Got it. Your sister's having a bath. Uh-huh. Cereal is full of sugar. Understood. You need to turn up early if you do a car boot sale. How early? A couple of hours, sir. Well done. Carol Vorderman can do a perfect moonwalk. Yeah. There are only 12 episodes of Faulty Towers. Yeah. You can make bombs out of cake mixture. Right you are. It's illegal to refuse to serve tap water in the UK. Thank you. How's my sister's bath coming along? She's just showering off, sir. Well, tell her to get a bloody move on! Oh, 
all go on then. Dad, where do I come from? Ipswich. No, I mean, um, how did I get born? Oh, right. Well, I met your mum at work. We bumped into each other in a corridor, literally. Then we had a few dates, got to know each other and uh, found out we got on really well. And then eventually we fell in love and got married and... Yeah, I know, icky stuff. And then in November 1994, your mum got drunk and had sex with two builders. <laughs> and nine months later, out you popped. Not sure which of the builders is your real dad. I'm guessing it's not the Chinese one. <laughs> right, chalk <chocolate. laughs> Yes, come on, you little tight-ass bitch! <laughs> Hello, boss. Dolny, Dolny, my beloved manager. Gum? What? Would you like an Orbit chewing gum? They are professional chewing gums. OK. <laughs> I left it minty for you, yeah? Um, I, I just wanted to ask you about this, this new left back you've just signed. Is now a good time? No, Tony, it's just not. I found out last night my little brother Caldo is dying. He has a liver condition, which means he can no longer process paint stripper. <laughs> that is nasty. So Caldo needs a new liver, but he has a rare blood type. Damn you, God! I ought to come up there myself and have you killed! May I bring Tony and he'll give you a good beating too, right? Oh, defo, you bastard. <laughs> Galo is such a beautiful man, such a caring man. You know, when he came back from Siege of Grozny, he gave me a string of enemy ears. He made it himself. <laughs> oh, so creative with it too. But it was you, Tony. You brought us closer together as brothers. All we needed on the cold winter night was a black market Commodore 64 and... Tony Dorset's soccer skills, too. <laughs> Who'd have thought? A soccer legend and a top computer programmer. Oh, no, no, I didn't really get too hands-on in the programming luck. Oh, <laughs> you're too modest, eh? It had your little fingers all over it. You know, Carlo loved that game, even more than he loved throwing cats from the upstairs window. <laughs> Why must the good die so young, Tony? <laughs> So about this Southampton Defender you've bought? Oh, but Tony, I'm so sorry. I'm letting my private life get in the way of your important work. What is it, Tony? Oh, well, I, I appreciate you buying him. Um, it's just we already have three left-backs on the squad, and uh, he's not exactly world-class. He's fit and healthy? Ooh, yes. He was cheap? Yes. He has rare blood type or rhesus negative? <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes in life, Tony, you fall asleep in a bar, you wake up in a hotel room minus a liver. Do you? <laughs> Have you never had your hand inside another man, Tony? <laughs> it feels quite... warm. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I can't do it, Dimitri. No. Oh. Be just like an episode of Holby City, but set in a holiday inn. <laughs> Pieter, take Tony to the kitchen. He'll find you a Tupperware box and some ice. <laughs> it is a fabulous property. Congratulations. Here's a package from the vendors. It's basically just instruction manual and what have you. If you've got a spare weekend, there's one here on how to run the swimming pool. <laughs> it's keys as well. They've got, like, front door, gate, house, stable yard, etc. It's all in there, anyway, for you to read at your leisure. Uh, before I forget, this oh, comes with our compliments. Thank you. Very, very, very well done. Wonderful. I know you're going to be very happy there. Thanks for the champagne. Thanks so Pleasure. much. There you go. Kill them. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, right, Tonto. We just been to a bank raid up at the East End. Very exciting. Tearing it up down the embankment. Absolutely fabulous. Got five of them. Then we went off for a cup of coffee. Oh, hang on. Got you this. Didn't have any cubes. Thought you'd just pour it onto the tongue, maybe. <laughs> Later. 
this. Here's one for the horse. Now, but for his vocational calling to the piano, Five here was within an ace of becoming a schoolmaster. Isn't that so, Five? Balum, 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 belie, below, below. <sighs> so just to hear that fills me with remorse. To think we're keeping such pedagogic pedigree from its rightful place at the front of a dusty classroom. A whole generation of young Britons <laughs> will have a fife-shaped gap in their frontal lobes. They're cerebral up! <laughs> Vast tranches of schoolboy cricketers denied the thrill of a Teddy Fife delivery. A Chinaman with a twist. Deprived of his famous anecdotes of how he saw off his last victim at the card table. A Chinaman with a twist. <laughs> or how Mrs. Fife came to produce such an exquisite-looking Oriental child. A twist with a Chinaman. <laughs> The chief amongst these omissions is what I like to call the Fife Perspective. And so, to redress the balance, we have set down the unique essence of Teddy Fife in the form of a song to be sung morning, noon and night by every child in the land. Why are the French such a bunch of workshires? Why are the Belgians such a bore? Why are the Germans and the Dutch such terrible mountebanks? And dealing with your Swiss, always a chore. From Monaco to Marrakesh, they'll lie as soon as draw breath. In Spain, they'll sell their mothers for a crown. In Greece, they live in bungalows and eat the bits between dogs' toes. The Turkish are all thieves of wide renown. A single truth we hold, self-evidence and fancy-free. Take note now, cos we'll only say it once. All points abroad are swayed in mediocrity because foreigners are a terrible bunch of c <laughs> Mind the Middle East at the moment's a terrible tangle, isn't it? Eee, oh dear. Nobody seems to know what to do. See, I don't know why they didn't just take their three main holy cities. What are they? Jerusalem, Mecca and Medina and turn them into independent city-states along the lines of the Vatican City. See, that way they'd be autocratic self governing that have their own police force so they'd be protected access to the holy shrines and what have you, and give each city-state a seat on the UN Council to protect the interests of all the citizens of whatever denomination. See, that way, nobody need feel that the sovereign rights to the holy shrines is being affected. And in one move, you'd take away one of the most contentious issues in the whole of the Middle East, perhaps even create a lasting peace. But then what do I know? <laughs> In 600 metres, turn right immediately after the single faith school. God only knows what they teach them in there. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's good they're getting an education. But you do wonder what gets wiped off the blackboards at the end of the day. <laughs> turn right at the cultural centre. Don't get me started. <laughs> Where are we, Captain? I'm getting nothing on these vector readings. I've got a bad feeling about this. It's not going to be easy out there. Wait a minute. Those mountains, that leaden sea, I know this planet. Does it have a name? It has a name, all right. This is Lower Dinsbury. <laughs> Lower Dinsbury? But they said... That it wasn't real. That it was a myth. Well, it looks pretty real to me. My God, he was right all along. Who, Captain? The man who taught me everything I know about these galaxies. Jeff Sutcliffe. <laughs> Jeff Sutcliffe, the Pagolian Knight. But when? After the Great Galaxian Crusades, I spent two years on the twin moons of Appleford and Little Appleford. It was there I learned the secret of the silent prism, an uncharted layout of the universe. It was thought to be mythical, but the governing Silo Warriors taught it as fact. They taught me the way in and out of every black hole and fourth dimension paradigm from Fetley to Bunnington. And what became of this, Jeff? He was too brave. After the Drylactic Wars began to affect his people, he went and faced the leader of the Ruloids himself. He fought Gordon Smethick. He did. And he was vaporized. But he saved Nether Witten in the process. But wait a minute. If Gordon Smethick killed Jeff Sutcliffe and the Sila warriors were wiped out in the Battle of Shipley, doesn't that mean you're the only being in the universe with the knowledge of the Silent Prism? Yes, it does. Then this is a trap, Captain. We can't go down there. Lieutenant, I give the orders round here. 
Those hostages need us. So, Captain, you came to us, as I thought you would. Your bravery makes you foolish. There's nothing you can do for the people of Lower Dinsbury now. <laughs> Who are you and what do you want? I am the fourth ruler of the skies of Mendor. Tyrant of a thousand deltas and commander of a Cytro fleet more powerful than this universe has ever seen before. But you shall know me as... Ian Nolan. <laughs> well, hello. What are you doing home so early? I came home from the lab. I was doing an experiment trying to synthesize the DNA of Blepharopsis mendica, the, the, the devil's flower mantis. Oh, Jesus! Oh, I, I had an accident. I, I pricked myself with a hypodermic. Oh, I pray to God this isn't what I think it is. My genetic structure rewriting itself, rebooting. I'm mutating. Oh, my God, I'm falling apart. I know that's just like me. I mean, yesterday, right, I'm working with Ian trying to put this strategy proposal together, and Sheila comes along and she's like, oh, look, Julie's gone off early. We'll have to cover the phones for an hour. And I'm just stood there going to myself, this isn't my job. You know, I'm sorry, but it just isn't. <laughs> my lungs. Mm. Oh, God, help me. My whole body's changing. My tissue is changing. Ah, it's changing. Well, I feel exactly the same. Sometimes I just sit there at my desk and I think to myself, hang on a minute. How come, if I'm a sales manager, about 60 to 70% of what I do would actually qualify me to be a client services director? But would Martin ever sit you down and tell you that? No, he would not. They'd just keep you exactly where they want you. Why? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. It's because if you're good at your job, people start to feel threatened. I think I'm going to have a lie down. Uh, you know when you just feel a bit off? <laughs> Toby, you've uh, made your England yeah. debut. Uh, you've scored three tries. The last one in particular was just fantastic. You, you ploughed through five All Blacks, put the ball down in the middle of the post and then converted it yourself. Uh, you're man of the match. There's your champagne. You must be very proud, Toby. Well done. Well done. I'm wearing my wife's knickers. <laughs> <laughs> no, my darling one, there's absolutely no hot water. I wonder if someone left the tap running, my sweet one. Well, no, my darling Miranda, I haven't even been in the kitchen today. Oh, I'm so sorry, my puppet. I thought perhaps you might have been in there. Maybe done some washing up. Well, no. After doing all that washing up last night, I thought perhaps you might like a spin with the marigolds. Sorry, uh, um... True, I know I'm frightfully elevated company, but really there's no need to bestrew my way with flowers. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Miranda, my darling. Uh, had some naughty magpie not had away with those shiny tongs, I might have been able to load the plates with rather more precision. Sorry, um, is there any chance of getting some more salt? You'll change it with the one over there. No, I just did. They're both empty. Actually, they're all empty. It's not good for you, no. There's far too much salt in all our diets. True, my love. Mm, what's that, Miranda, my darling? I, I'm afraid I can't hear you because I'm busy serving a customer. Oh, no, it's all right, my darling. I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. <laughs> Careful, Miranda, darling. Will you hurt yourself? Excuse me. No, don't worry. I'm fine. Oh, I think I must have slipped on one of your rogue pieces of beetroot. Excuse me. What? <laughs> I was wondering if I could get another plate. This one's got something on it. We do prefer that our customers don't raise their voice when they're making complaints. Who's raising his voice? I, I wasn't raising my voice. I won't be bullied. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you need to calm down. This is absurd. It's kicking off, Prue. Dad, it's here. Dandelions. I found it. <laughs> Last bee of the year has just passed away. Good work. Ian Botham called. He's lost his car keys. Shit. No one buys rollerblades when it's raining. Right, so. You can hear traffic on some of the early Beatles stuff. Okay. If you pull grey hairs out, they grow back crinkly. Excellent. Thank Elephants you. get pissed on rotten fruit. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> Ian Botham called. He's found his car keys. Where were they? In the kitchen. Okay. So the shipping forecast has come. Not coming. now, Declan. <laughs> Holly, sweetheart. Hello, Rog. You're back early. Hello, darling. I thought I'd surprise you. Is it our anniversary? Ah, oh, I was in the shower. Sorry. I should have called ahead. I didn't think. Holly, who is it? <laughs> Peter? Hello, Rog. <laughs> Peter was just helping me fix the shower. 
Was it broken? No. Yes. Uh, well, it, it was broken, but it, it's not anymore. I had to uh, strip off and get in there because I didn't want my clothes getting wet. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, thanks a lot. Sounds like you came at just the right time. Yes, well, Holly was having a shower when I called round. Tea, darling. Yes, yes please. please. <laughs> so, how was the meeting? Oh, fine. Les had some proposals for the pension plan he wanted to run past you. Righto. Shame you couldn't make it, actually. Well, I had to go and uh, visit a client who lives near here, and on my way back I thought I'd just pop in, see how you were. Well, I was at the meeting you'd arranged. Then I remembered you'd be at the meeting I'd arranged. <laughs> and uh, Holly said she was having trouble with the shower, so, uh, anyway... Um... Look, Rog, there's something I need to tell you. Yeah? Sit down. What is it, Peter? This isn't easy, Rog. I've seen Les's proposals for the pension plan already, and I hate them. Oh, no. <laughs> They're piss-poor proposals. Poor old Les. I know. Should we tell him? Well, if he can't see for himself, that's his lookout. No, you're right. If he can't see what's staring him in the face, that's his problem. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's obvious to everyone how piss-poor those proposals are, and if he can't clock that, well, I have no sympathy for him. My feelings entirely. In fact, I'd like you to have a meeting with Les. Put him straight. Me? Yes. Would, uh... Seven o'clock tomorrow be OK? Well, I have to check with Holly. I have. She's fine about it. <laughs> I'm wearing my wife's knickers! <laughs> Sorry, Steve, I'm not being funny, but could you just keep it down about ah! <laughs> What's happening to me? Oh, mate. I keep asking myself the same question, if I'm honest. Three times I worked past nine at night last week. Three times, and nobody says thank you. Jane's off out the door for six every day, you know. How many other companies are there out there that could use my skill sets and actually bloody pay me more while we're on the subject? Thank you very much. But what do you do? You just carry on. <laughs> I know, I'm just so frustrated. I mean, you know, like they say you only use 20% of your brain. It's like they're only using 20% of my potential. I can remember when I built that tower of straws at school, I actually won a bloody award for inventiveness. You know, nowadays I just feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall. I really do. Oh, for God's sake, do something. Yeah, you're right. I'm seriously considering just giving it till Christmas and then, you know, having a really good think about it. <laughs> you don't mind if I go in the shower first, do you? <laughs> Take that as a no. <laughs> a speed camera. 400 metres ahead. Reduce your speed now. You don't want to be lining the government's pockets. They'll only spend it on asylum seekers. <laughs> this country is finished. <laughs> Take the next right. who's about to attempt the first single-handed, unaided ascent of K2, like in the way of alcoholic refreshment, eh? <laughs> Lemonade, seriously. Oh, I've been training for four years. One pint's only going to stop you climbing the Eastern Ridge. Charlie? Guys, I've got to be at base camp 6am tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, yeah, I'll, I'll have a pint of Stella, then. Yay! Yay! Then it's off. All right, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's definitely me, then. Oh, no. Well, no, no, while you're in the loo, Jenny turned up. She's getting us all cocktails. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to drive over to Michael's to pick up the crampons I lent him, so... No, no, they're flaming zombies! 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 Yeah. I can probably do it without crampons, yeah. Oh, what a bum. Great night, guys. Fantastic. Right. Seriously, thank you so much. Brilliant send-off. Oh, where are you going, you? Second highest mountain in the world to climb tomorrow. Single-handed. Oggy's here! <laughs> 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 I thought I'd missed you. <laughs> hey, listen, same again, everyone. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, please. Wine, please. yeah I, I could probably stay for one more. Yeah. Six hours sleep, that's, that's still two more than Mrs Thatcher got. She was running the country. <laughs> Pint of water before I go to bed? Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Red shape, red 
sure you're all right? You've got to climb K2 in three hours. I'll be fine. Just get a minicab from here straight to base camp. Pop in some millets on the way. I, sh I should really have my special high-carb, slow-release energy breakfast, but... get a scotch egg from the Wild Bean Cafe. <laughs> So wait a minute. None of you have got work tomorrow. <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> Can you feel that? Mm. OK, just give it another minute or so. Get you nice and numb. We do have some patients who don't want any anaesthetic, you know. Nothing at all, just drill straight in. <laughs> Interestingly, it tends to be the women who don't want the injection, you know. Don't know why that should be. They're a different breed, aren't they, the ladies? <laughs> Higher pain threshold and all that. Tough as old boots, some of them. <laughs> you know when you were a little lad and you tuck your bits between your legs and you run around <laughs> saying, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. <laughs> Interestingly, it's much more effective when you have proper pubic hair. <laughs> you have to be a, bit, a, bit, a little bit firmer when you tuck it up there. I sometimes use duct tape. <laughs> but, um... The thing is, it's, it's never going to be the same as having the real thing, though, is it? <laughs> I mean, what is it like to actually have an actual lady bit? <laughs> I mean, of course, we've all experimented with inserting things up the old Jackson, but... Uh... <laughs> It's never going to be the same thing as having a really good seeing to, is it? <laughs> OK, let's crack on. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, i tell you what it is. I just feel... I just feel really... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 